again from uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, I, wanna, I, I think it's a familiar passage of scripture. It's the uh, charity scripture. And uh, my daughter's charity, named charity, but it has nothing to do with that. Uh, so I do know that uh, you guys may understand this. I think you women probably really will. When Sue was, uh, my wife was pregnant for charity, um, we took the Lamaze um, lessons and breathing techniques and all that. I was supposed to be the coach to help Sue through that. Uh, it's a different situation when it's live, okay? Um, and it's practice in a room with a bunch of people saying that was good, that, that's really good how you did that. Uh, so that uh, there, uh, we were at the hospital and I was saying breathe, exhale, <laughs> inhale. I guess I was doing a little faster uh, because I was breathing a little heavy myself, uh, realizing that things were happening. And then the doctor said, I think I got uh, two heartbeats in there. And I went, oh. You know, wins. You know, I thought we were focusing on one here. You know, and and uh, I turned to Sue at one point and said, "Okay, exhale." She said, "No, I'm on the inhale." You know, and uh, you know that was the end of the coaching. I, yeah, I passed out. Okay, uh, this was out. No one void. Okay, uh, so the uh, and the. Uh, didn't help that the doctor went through about three different uh, gowns. As he stood there, he said, no, I want another one, no, I want another one. I said, somebody get the doctor a gown he's happy with. We got a baby coming here. And uh, so, and uh, when the baby cried and they asked for the name, uh, Sue said, Cherry, a gift from God. And so, uh, this chapter means a little bit of that for me, but it also uh, it'll be quite evident as we go through it, some of the things I have to say about it that mean a lot uh, more as a person wanting to apply love in all that you do, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 follows the 1 Corinthians 12, which had to do with the gifts in the body of Christ. And you, you, I think you know what I'm talking about without too much definition. There's some people that are really gifted. They can sing, they can play the piano, they can uh, teach, they can, they, they just know how to say the right things, do the right things. They send cards to people, they're quiet about it. Uh, and, uh, and then this chapter follows the gifts because it's important in our gifts that God gives us to demonstrate those in love, okay? Uh, and this is self-explanatory in many ways, but here's the reading of the word from 1 Corinthians 13, uh, all 13 verses. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a resounding gong, or a clanging symbol, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not in love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres love never fails but where there are prophecies they will cease 
Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see before a reflection, a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. That still speaks to me as I read it today, like the first time I read it, like the first time I heard it. I remember something like, you have to walk the talk. You have to practice what you preach. Here it is. It doesn't single out people from ministers, teachers. It's all out there for us to look at. Many people call this the hymn of love. They actually sing this. You know? I've heard it before. People sing the phrases, not the whole 13 verses, but this chapter reminds you and I of the gifts that we have, if they're not utilized in love, then they fall into these categories. The first verse, you know, I, I read this in the NIV, but you know, the King James says, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels and have not love, I'm a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. I remember, you probably do too, going to high school football games, walking by the band, people going crazy, rooting for their team, okay? But if the team didn't produce out there, the band felt kind of out of place, okay? The two go together, okay? You have to produce. It's just not making a lot of noise. It's kind of like, having a sermon but no title or no direction just and I think Paul's talking about the importance of having Christ in our lives you can't fake love okay you know who loves you in the family you know who loves you in the marketplace they might fake it some one or two and you feel betrayed when you find out they don't like you love you but when somebody loves you they believe in who you are okay I remember the first church that I pastored I didn't know what I was doing okay I didn't have a clue okay uh, pastor um, it's not in your job description but you're responsible for the newsletter too and I would get little things and this too that to and I'm going I thought I just had to preach okay what do you mean I have to be a ministrator too okay what do you mean okay I'm into the visitations in the hospital uh, seemed like I couldn't get away from some places when I visited the home and uh, exhausted at the end of the week and it was time to preach so I learned that do you love what you're doing? Do you love the Lord? Or is it just about going through functions or just going through symbols? And I quickly learned what this passage is trying to tell you and I. Okay? God taught me to learn things about Him. That He loves all of us. I I've spent a large time on my knees praying for some people that I just did not understand 
couldn't understand how they came to that conclusion or that conclusion. One man I remember in one of my congregations, he was a deacon. Boy, in the board meetings, he was always fighting with somebody. You know? And I had a rough week. Okay? A rough week is kind of like this with pastors. So at teachers' meetings, I had to go for my kids. Had two funerals. Had the check bounce from the treasurer. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was doing a lot of praying then. And this guy stopped by the door of my house early in the morning. He was a school teacher. Okay. He said, I said, uh, I'm just putting coffee on. You want to come on in and have a cup of coffee? I said, no, I'm on the way to teach school. He said, but Pastor, I know you're having a rough week. And I just wanted to let you know I'm thinking of you and I love you. It didn't fit with the guy that I'd seen carrying on. Okay, so I had to ask that question right there. I said, why do you argue and fight in the board meetings? And then you're so nice by coming by to check on your pastor. You know, you're like a marshmallow that's burnt. On the outside, you seem to be a little crusty, but on the inside, you're a marshmallow. You just revealed that to me. So what's the deal here? He said, I just do that to kid people. I think it's the way that kid with people. I said, you're gonna make somebody mad one of these times. You might wanna reevaluate that because that's not who you are, man. You got a lot of love in your heart. And you came at a time that Man, I needed a booster shot. And the, I know the Lord says he uses a simple to confound the wise, but this is far above that. I watched the next board meeting. He was a different person. And he was more relaxed in the meetings. And he's a brilliant guy, but he just thought agitating people was a way to motivate people. I didn't get into the psychology of it with his family, how he was raised or any of that. I took it on the face value and I'm glad I did. This chapter is where that speaks to me about. Okay? Sometimes you have to be tough. I understand that. I've got three kids. I know you have to be like that. Okay? And, uh, you know, when we, we would have family meetings. I don't know who introduced that to me. I regret introducing that to our family. We want to talk about something. Well, let's just talk about it. The oldest one wanted to change the hours so he had to be out and when he needed to be home. Okay. Uh, I listened to him and he said, well, what do you think? I said, okay. I'm not going to change the hours, but glad you spoke your piece. I said, he said, well, I thought we were going to change it because we had a family meeting. I said, uh, now this is not a democracy, okay? I wasn't practicing socialism, so don't get me wrong here, but dictatorship would be a little more to it. Uh, but I loved him. He loves me. We laugh about that today. As I break down this passage of scripture and say, if I speak, in the tongues of men and angels. That would be pretty impressive, okay? But if I don't have love, that if I'm just doing it to show off, okay? I've learned that in saying, I had special training when I went to seminary, but if I get up here and told you the Greek word, the Hebrew word, if you're still awake at the end, I'd be lucky, okay? It's the love that's important. My supervising pastor, thank God, he said, Frank, you're going to make mistakes. Don't think you're not. But if people know you love them, there's grace in it for you. Okay? You're going to make mistakes. You're going to miss the mark. But practice love. Okay? Well, I find out that's what God calls us all to do. It's not just the ministers, but... I'm just sharing with you about myself. 
that verse goes on to say that I'm just making a lot of noise if there's no heart in it. Okay? And I've learned, corny as it might seem, is that I'm to be a reflection of God's heart. Whether I'm preaching, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm living in the car on the way home with Sue or anybody else. You know, if I want my kids to be in church, if I want my kids to be worshiping the Lord, they got to see whether I'm real or not. Okay? They got to see whether I mean what I say. And I'm not just doing this because I get paid every once in a while and it's what my vocation is. You don't do it for that. You do it because God loved you and God said this is a privilege to carry my word to other people. Okay? So you can have all these gifts. You can have the gift of knowledge and uh, mysteries of the world. And you can move mountains with your faith. But if there's no love, you're just driving people. Okay? Whipping people. Hurting people. And if we give all we have to the poor, surrender our bodies to be burned, and there's no heart in it, that's faking it. Okay? That's just faking it. Whether it's prophecies, whether it's gifts, whether it's benevolence, it has to have love with it. Okay? There was, uh, you know, we still got quite a bit of snow in our yard, in our driveway, and elsewhere. And I've told some before that uh, Sue's mom, uh, her grandmother, and best friend were killed on snowy roads. Uh, believe me, we, her and I both have tried to put her in the car and get over it. No, it's, not. it's a lot easier if I just get in the car and get here myself. Okay. Um, there's some things in life we just got to leave alone, okay? And uh, so this morning I got up and uh, got ready. Yesterday I, I, I said that uh, don't put yourself through a battle. I'm ready to go myself, okay? I'm ready to go myself. I, that's a policy in my house too. If the kids are sick, Sue's sick. I'm not dragging them to church so you can see them here as fixtures. You know, I, I don't want you here if you're sick. I don't want you here uh, if you don't feel well. So we practice that charity at home first and then from uh, outward. And I know God's word is true. It works that way. It works that way for you. It works that way for me too. Verses 4 through 7 really define what love is. Okay? You get to, okay, I understand that if my heart's not in it and I'm faking it and blah, 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 blah. And, well, what is love? Because the world gives all kinds of definitions about what love is. Okay? Paul really lays it out here beautifully when he says, love is patient. Well, with me, you don't have to go much further than that. Patience? No, my strong suit. Uh, like the jungle, two or three things at the same time. I'm not good with either one of them when I do that, but I, for some reason, think that, okay, got two things going here at once, okay? Love is patient, okay? How is that? How is that? My, my oldest son, you know, he, he was the, uh, Matt was the runner in track, but my, my oldest son was the athlete in the family, okay? And uh, he was a good ball player. But I remember the bases loaded, all the families there, all the families there, grandma, grandpa. And he steps up to the plate. Okay? Man, we're going to win the ball game because I know that boy can hit. Strike one. Hey, wait. Strike two. Okay, call him over the side. I said, relax. He said, everybody's just counting on me, Dad. I know they are. I know I gotta hit it out of here. I got I gotta hit. Relax, relax. Then he got up there and struck out. Come back, sit down. That was the end of the world for him. Okay. 
He is capable of doing that. That's when dad puts his arm around him and says, it's just a game, son. You have other opportunities. Don't worry about it. Okay? He's crying by then. Okay? Love is patient. Okay? Love is patient. He had his other victories later on, but you know, it doesn't work 100%, but someone being patient with you and showing love makes a difference. Okay? Another memory we talk about from time to time when we're together and he says, man, Dad, I remember when you did that with me and I've meant so much, really did. Didn't make any difference. Mom and different ones patted me on the back saying, that's okay. We'll win the game next time. Okay. Love is patient. Love is kind. Okay. It's kind. Folks that, uh, I don't know how many folks I've seen in my life, first time that they preached, or first time they teach, first time they even put up here, okay? You want to say something kind to them, okay? Not, boy, you look scared. Man, your knees are clapping between there. Oh, yeah, oh, you know. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Like Barnabas, an encourager of the of the brother, an encourager of the sisters. You know, love is kind. It does not envy. Okay, you're getting blessed. I'm getting blessed because I'm watching you get blessed. I'm not envious because you're getting blessed and I'm not. Okay, wow. Okay, if you believe and pray for each other and somebody's getting blessed whether it's a blessing from God or financial blessing promotion job you're happy because you're happy you've prayed for them okay you're a part of their lives it isn't a competition it's boy I wish that would happen to me okay it does not boast, it's not proud, it's not rude. These are pretty self-evident here. It's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. I'm gonna forgive you, but I ain't gonna forget this, okay? Well, don't forgive me, you know? Don't keep any record of it, you know? Maybe I screwed up, maybe I made a mistake, okay? I need your forgiveness, or if you can't forgive me, I just want you to know I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to say that to you, okay? It always, I like the, when we get to the, the seventh here, well, we have to wrap up six, it rejoices with the truth. Jesus, when he said I'm the truth, wasn't just kind of an ideal. He's a person. Jesus is the truth. And as brothers and sisters walk with Christ, man, if you don't get along here, you're not probably going to be up there. Maybe both, okay? Maybe one, maybe the other. It's all about rejoicing in the truth, okay? Some of us, it takes a little longer to get what's going on than others, okay? Nevertheless, rejoices in truth, okay? Number seven is where I really like the big, the big part. It always protects. Love always protects. My kids do this and <laughs> said it even to my embarrassment when I grew up. They'd say, you know, if anybody ever breaks into the house and gets by the dogs, because we always had dogs, you got to deal with dad. Okay. Then you got to deal with mom. By that time, we're out of the house. We're safe. You know, and I thought, hey, I didn't think of it like that. We're going to get bigger dogs, okay? Yeah, let's not wait till it gets to dad, okay? But love protects. Man, you know, I, I, I did have a story there when, before I went into ministry, when I was still in construction. And there's these three boys in the neighborhood that were stealing gas. Okay? I 
I kind of laid up on my uh, roof with my 30-30. I guess I wouldn't really trust the Lord, okay? I was just going to scare them, okay? That was a good shot. Uh, three nights I did that, no gas stolen, but oh, this is stupid. Then all of a sudden, I uh, went to bed early, so the kids and I heard something bust. I looked at and I could see those three kids I had a light shining, and they were stealing the gas. I grabbed the starter pistol, okay? Because uh, uh, we had a starter pistol for the kids in running, okay? They like to run and I just get the, okay. I walked out with the starter pistol, I told my wife, okay, close the door, I'm protecting you. And so I went out there and uh, one kid was drunk. He started, Lay him on his hands. Hey, preacher, what's that about turning the other cheek? I had a strange feeling he was going to cut loose on me. Okay? I took that starter pistol and put it in his nose. He was drunk, remember? And said, we ain't talking about waylaying the preacher. I'm going to preach and you're going to listen. All the other two stood and I said, I know your mom. She's a God-fearing mom. She would not be proud of you out here doing this, okay? You need to get in church. Both of you two uh, guys need to be in church too. Your mom's a praying mom. She's probably praying for you right now. Now, the Bible says, if I don't provide for my family, I'm worse than an infidel. So the only thing that stands between my family and you is me. And we ain't had no more preaching. I want you to move along. I don't want to see you again unless it's in church. You know? Then I come back to the house. Would you still let me in? It's me. Okay. So, whew, glad you're here and protected us. Next morning I get up. I had two flat tires and my gas was empty. Okay. Now, I put one of them in jail for 10 days after that. His uh, dad threatened to burn the house down. You're in a whole different arena when you get into that kind of stuff, okay? I said, I love the Lord. I don't want any trouble, but you go ahead and set that house on fire, but make sure none of my family's in there because not even God's going to help you if they're in there. I love that family, and let's quit this stuff right now. I took my jacket off. Boy was in jail and I gave my jacket to him. He said, it's cold in here. This is the only jacket I got, sir. So here's his jacket. May that be accepted as a peace offering. You're gonna stay in jail because you gotta learn your lesson 10 days. But when you get out, I'll be glad to take you to church. I led his mom to the Lord, okay? I don't know what happened to him. But sometimes we have to provide protection. It always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Always perseveres. Okay? You love the Lord, your God with all your heart, and He helps you persevere in some of the toughest situations that you might find yourself. The next couple verses, we know in part, we don't know in all, we know a little bit, God gives a little bit here, a little bit there. When I was a child, how many examples can you think there? When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Hey, when I was a child, it was a big deal to letter in football or sports. I like those. It's always counting how many quarters I had, so I, okay, I'm in. I got it. Put on a sweater. I don't think like that anymore. I don't think about those things that just self-glorify yourself. As a child, you just think of how that works for you. As a man, you 
you see how it works for everybody else. Okay? I become all things that I might win some, the Bible says. Okay? We look through a poor reflection as a meter. It's like that glass you look and it's not really cleaned up. We'll understand it when we're in his presence, but now we're tainted by our view only and how we see things versus how God can show us things through his love in our heart. We begin to grow, we're amazed, okay? I'm not saying that you turn the other cheek or, you know, you have to get to certain places that you love that that, that happens, okay? Paul was a man who stubbornly pushed on and wanted to testify to Nero, the emperor. He lost his life. He used everything he could to get to that place where he would testify to Nero about Jesus Christ. Talk about love and dedication. Okay? He was put in prison for two years. They threw away the key and forgot about him and then came back to him and said, well, you're a Roman citizen, you can go. He said, I'm going to talk to Nero. Okay? He was so steadfast in his love for Christ. Most of us know about Nero. He's a pretty despicable individual. But the love of God was so strong in his heart to do what he needed to do to, to share the good news that his life was not his first priority. He wraps it up with this here. And now these three, these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. They're all mentioned in the Bible. Faith, if we have faith as a mustard seed, it can move mountains. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hope, one of my favorite scriptures. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Those are all important things in a person's character and their makeup. But love is the greatest of it's not some cheap word just thrown around, okay? I love you, Jesus, but I'm not going to do that right now, okay? I got other things on my plate. Uh, get back to you on that. Love is, yes, Lord. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We know, Book of John, we have the confidence that we believe in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us, and we have the petitions that we desire of him. Wow.